Lake Church. Thanks for being here today. And we've got an important announcement coming up. We've got baptisms coming up July 10th. It's gonna be a party, it's gonna be a celebration. If you've never been baptized, I wanna encourage you to take a step in your faith, put on a jersey for Jesus, be bold, be courageous, make that decision. You know, that's the first thing that God asks us to do when we make a decision to follow Him is to go public with our faith. And so that's simply what you're doing. You're going public outwardly with an inward commitment. And so if you haven't signed up, sign up for baptisms July 10th. Otherwise, be here that weekend. It's gonna be a party, it's gonna be a celebration. And this weekend, we're celebrating all the dads in the house. Happy Father's Day to all the dads. Thank you so much for being here. All of the dads that I know that are amazing fathers are fathers that have made a decision to put God first in their life and in their family's lives. And so you're here in the house and we believe God's gonna bless you today in massive ways. And so for me on this Father's Day, I started thinking, hey, how could we bless Elevate Church? Like, how, could, how can I give them some of the great things that I have been given? And so I decided I'm gonna ask my three of my favorite people in all the world, three godly pastors who love Jesus, who love their families, they're building amazing churches in America. And so this weekend, we're gonna hear from Pastor Lonnie Snell, Pastor Anthony Milas, and Pastor Tim Seidler. These are three guys who, who encourage me, sometimes correct me, challenge me, build me up in my faith. And so I believe they're gonna have an amazing word for you today. You know, the Bible talks about honor and honoring those who, who preach God's word and that's simply valuing it and that's opening our hearts. Okay, God, you're putting something in them for my life. And so I wanna receive what God has for me. I don't know about you, but I want God's best for my life. And so I wanna be open to what God has for me on this Father's Day. And so today we're gonna hear great messages. You're gonna be challenged, you're gonna be encouraged. And dads, God has something great for you. Keep being who you are, keep growing, keep stepping out in faith and following Jesus one day at a time. But today, hey, let's put our hands together for these three amazing pastors. Come on, church. Brian and Danielle Sanders and Elevate Church, welcome to Father's Day weekend and the best place to be, and that is in the house, man. It is an honor just to spend a few minutes and share with you what God has laid on my heart today. But I want to honor your pastors, Brian and Danielle. They are unbelievable, amazing people. They're pastors. They have pastors' hearts. They love you. They love this church. They're people of integrity. They're incredible people. And you are blessed to have them as your pastor. And so when Pastor Brian asked me to just share a few minutes with you today, that was my honor just to share with you what God had placed on my heart today. What I want to share with you is a verse and a thought that comes out of Genesis chapter 26 and verse 18, and it says this, And Isaac dug again the wells of water which had been dug in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham, and he called the wells by name which his father had called them. Notice what he said, that Isaac dug again the wells that had been stopped up by the Philistines after Abraham had died. What I want to challenge you with today as a thought is this. It is time to redig the wells, redig the wells that God has established. It's time to open back up the wells in which the generations prior to us have already dug. And that it's time that we not only redig them, but we don't rename them. We actually call them by what it is they are named. When you think about it, what happened was this. Abraham understood that there was a that wells were important to his family. And so he spent time digging wells, looking for water, looking for something that would preserve within his family, within his generation, which in his legacy. And so he would dig a well. And oftentimes the wells in the Bible would be 40 feet down. And so Abraham spent time digging in the hot sun, in the sand, and the hard rock to dig out the wells and to find something that would offer life to his wife, his kids, but his kids, kids, and generations. So wells were life-giving, but also leg wells were legacy-altering. And what happened was this, Abraham died. And when Abraham died, the Bible says that the group called the Philistines came and poured dirt back into those wells, which means he stopped up, they stopped up everything that Abraham had established. Let me give you a thought here today, that the enemy is fighting to stop up what God has established that the enemy is fighting against what God is trying to establish in your life, in your church, 
that is life-giving and legacy-altering. And on this Father's Day, I want to encourage and challenge some men that we become the Isaac generation again and we redig some wells that God has established. And not only do we redig them, but we won't rename them. We're going to call them what they are. The Bible says Isaac dug them and he called them exactly in the Bible. It says he called them exactly the wells which his father Abraham had called him. So let me encourage you with a couple things. One is this, we're going to redig them and we're not going to rename them. And we're going to redig the well of salvation. We still hold on to the fact that salvation is by other, no other name under heaven by which man can be saved and his name is Jesus. We're not going to rename it. There's one way to heaven and it's Jesus. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life and no man comes to the Father but by me. We're going to redig that well and we're going to hold on to that well that there ain't many roads to heaven but there is one person, one way to heaven and it's through Jesus Christ and Christ alone. I want to encourage you this with another well. The other well is called commitment. We live in a generation and a culture where we don't want to commit to anything. We don't want to say yes to anything. But Jesus said, you're to take up your cross daily and follow me. We need some men in the house that are willing to commit, actually commit, commit to Jesus, commit to being a follower of Jesus Christ, commit to serving, commit to getting engaged, commit to getting involved, commit. I find it interesting, men, we have this, temp this temptation that when all of a sudden the commitment starts to rise within the life of the church, that the first thing we want to do is we want to jump ship and go to another church and another place. But I'm calling you out today and I'm calling you up that you would commit, get engaged, get involved, get invested, that you would be a kind of a person that would be an exclamation point within the life of this church and not a question mark. I need you to commit. I want you to redig the well of commitment and actually commit to something. I'm going to also encourage you to redig the well of worship. We need passion back in our worship. We need to get engaged in worship. We need to be leaders within worship. We need to lead from the front. We need to lead with passion. We need to, to lead with joy. The Bible says that we come into our, his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. We ought to be the ones that are leading that way. I want to encourage you to be worshipers. I believe that the reason that we have so many teen sickles is because we got so many popsicles in the church. And that, men, I need you to know this, that your young people, this next generation is watching you worship, and we need to be worshipers and leading in worship. I want you to redig the well of church. Come on. The average statistic shows that we are a part of the church, attending church, involved in the church 1.25 times a month. 1.25 times. It is time that we raise the value of church again. The church isn't Pastor Brian's idea. The church isn't pra Pastor Danielle's idea. The church is God's idea. God established it. God started it. God created it. God launched it. God initiated it. And God wants, to, God wants to do something in this church, but we got to value church again. Can I tell you this one more? Another thought is we need to redig the well that we lead within our homes. It's not the government's job to raise my kids. It's not the school's job to raise my kids. It's not even the church's job to raise my kids. It is my job. I'm the one that is responsible to invest in my sons, invest in my generation, invest in my legacy. I'm the one that ought to be teaching them about who Jesus is, teaching them the word, teaching them worship, teaching them how to share their faith. That's my job. That's my responsibility. And if something outside of my home is teaching them something different, then I need to course correct and get them back on track to the calling and the purpose and the destiny and the plan that God has for their life. We need to actually redig the well of faith. Can I get an amen to that? We need to be people of faith. We're not people of feelings. We are people of faith. We need to stir our faith once again. We need to declare words of faith. We need to have words of faith. We need to hold on to words of faith. We need to get into the word of God. Let the word of God build our faith again. Get in the presence of God. Let him ignite our faith again so that we are people of faith in the world that is so fearful, but they know that when they walk into Elevate Church, when they walk into our lives, when they come in contact with us, they know this, that we are people of faith. It is a time for us that what the world needs is the world needs, they don't, they don't need powerless Pentecost to become the norm. They, what we need is we have more deserts than we do downpours. We, we need to redig the well. We have 
more perversion in the church and we do power in the church, we need to redig some wells. When we have more playboys in the pulpit than we do prophets in the pulpit, we need to redig some wells. When we have more compromise than we do conviction, it is time that we redig some wells. We need a fresh baptism, an outpouring of the Spirit of God in our lives and in our churches. We need to redig some wells. It is time for us to step up as men, to step up as women of God, to step up as a church and step up and step out so that we can become all that God wants us to be. And let's just see, let's just see if we're willing to redig some wells. We're willing to redig some wells. Let's just see what God will do. Elevate Church in the house. How's everybody doing today? Hey, man, I'm Pastor Anthony Milas of Granite United Church. I'm up here in God's country, uh, New England, home of your former pastor's favorite quarterback, uh, Tom Brady. Shout out from Patriots Nation. Hey, Elevate Church, man. What a great day, right? What a great weekend to be in the house of God. I am honored to be able to speak into your church today. And the reason why it's such an honor for me is because you're incredible pastors, uh, two of the best people walking the planet, two of the most beautiful people walking the planet, have poured into our church here at Granite in conferences, priests in our church, uh, women's conferences, men's conferences, marriage conferences, and we are better because you, Elevate Church, have been willing to share your pastors with us. So shout out to you. Do me a favor on the count of three, look at a person next to you and just say, you're awesome, and give them a round of applause. Ready? One, two, three. You're awesome. Come on, give the person next to you a round of applause. Amen. Come on, somebody. Hey, I am uh, honored to be able to speak into you today. Uh, I just want to share real quick a couple thoughts from the Word of God to encourage all the men. And I think the encouragement here will go well beyond just the men uh, to everybody that's in the house today. Because know this, um, everybody that's here today, you have influence and God's got a great plan for your life. Hey, let me ask you a question. If you're saved, do you know it? Say amen. That means this, that Jesus Christ has radically transformed your life by his amazing grace. And know this that God's got a great plan and a great purpose for your life. Listen, and God's plan and purpose for your life, I mean, the purpose of your life is the absolute answer to somebody's prayer, to somebody's uh, brokenness. And God wants to use you to do great things, not only in, but through. I remind it in Joel chapter 3 where the Bible says this, and I love this verse. It says, say to the nations far and wide, get ready. I love this. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, because we've got a be ready. All right. We got to get ready because we got to be ready. Well, we, what do we got to be ready for? Well, it says this, get ready for war. Okay. Get ready for war. Now, now I want to just read this. Listen to this. It says, call out your best warriors. Oh, come on, somebody. Call out your best warriors. Let all the fighting men advance for the attack. Hey, I just want to encourage you with something today, and it's this, that there's more inside of you than you realize, that there's kingdom greatness inside of you, that when you said yes to the Lord Jesus Christ, God, the Holy Spirit, took a permanent residence inside of you, and Jesus said, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, so you can be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the other most parts of the world. Can I just say this to you, Elevate, today, is this. Again, God saved you on purpose for a purpose because he's got a great purpose for your life. And part of that purpose is this, man, realizing that we've got to get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, because we better be ready because we are in a warfare. You say, well, what is this warfare that we're in? Well, truth is, man, the enemy's after you. He's after your marriage, your kids, your extended family, your friends. If you know Christ is your Savior, he knows he's lost your your soul, that you're a child of God, born again, born forever. But he wants your platform, and he wants your influence. And we're going to say, heck to the no, to the devil. You can't have my family. You can't have my kids, my grandkids. Uh, We're going to go to war. And we're not fighting with people. 
people. We're fighting for people, but we will be willing to fight all of hell itself through the power of the Holy Spirit so that we can make sure that our family, our communities know Christ, follow Christ, and live for Christ. You know, as followers of Jesus, those of us that know Christ as our Savior, um, the word Christian means Christ follower. And the Bible says this about Jesus, that he was a prophet, a priest, and a king. And the apostle Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. And what do we want to do as dads? The truth is we want to get out and we want to lead. We want to lead in such a way where like the apostle Paul said, follow me. We want to say to to our loved ones, to our spouses, if you're in a season of singleness, to those that you're dating, um, to our nieces, our nephews, our grandkids, our sons, our daughters, hey, follow me as I follow Christ. And again, who was Jesus? He was prophet, priest, and king. And what does a prophet do? Well, let me just share this with you. A prophet represents God to their community. If we're going to be like Christ and we're going to be Christ followers to our family, to to our sphere of influence, one of the great privileges we have is to represent God to our families. And then Jesus not only was prophet, he was priest. And what does a priest uh, typically do? A priest represents his community, his family to God. So as fathers, as as people who have influence, we need to represent God to the people we have influence with and then represent the people that we love and care about. We We got to bring them before God, right? We represent them before God in prayer, in worship. And then the third thing was Jesus was prophet, priest, and king. And I know as a king, we think, well, we're just going to sit back and get served. But that's not what it means. You know what a king does? He sets up a rule and a reign for the benefit of others. It's not self-serving. A good king, a godly king like Jesus said, I didn't come here to serve, but to serve and give my life a ransom for many. And so let me just encourage you with this today. As those of us who love Jesus, and I know you love Jesus, that's why you're in the house today. As those of us who love Jesus, as those of us that want to lead on behalf of Christ, like Paul, follow me as I follow Christ. Remember, God is saying, call out the best, call out the best. Well, guess what? You're the best. And I want to encourage you today to follow the example of Christ as prophet, priest, and king. Let's represent God to our families, our families bring them before God, and let's set up homes. Let's set up safe places where our families not only get to know about God, but they get to know God. Hey, I love you guys. I love you, Pastor Brian and Danielle. Elevate staff. Man, you guys are crushing it. Let's keep on keeping on because what we do matters. God bless you. Let me pray. Father, bless these people. I just pray, God, that you would just, uh, man, you'd meet with them in a special way. Give a blessing to your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, Elevate Church, my name is Tim, and along with my wife, Linda, we pastor the Experience Church back in Bridgeport, Ohio, and just wanted to say thank you uh, for including me in your Father's Day experience, and to remind you that your church is impacting people, not only in Morton, Illinois, in the surrounding areas, but all over the planet. Man, there are some great things happening in Elevate and through Elevate, and every great move of God starts with some great people, and you've got some of the greatest leaders, greatest pastors on the planet, great friends of mine, Pastors Brian and Danielle. Can we just take a minute and appreciate my friends and your pastors, Pastors Brian and Danielle. Just give it up for them. Those guys are awesome. We, we love them so much. And again, I'm honored to be speaking to you today. And I want to talk to you from a fatherly perspective about some text. It's not limited to just the fathers in the room. So no matter who you are, where you've been, or what you've done, I believe if you can get this really simple concept that I want to talk about today, it can dramatically change the trajectory of your life. And what I'm speaking on is found in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 4. Very, very short verse. And Samuel is a prophet. 
and he's speaking on behalf of God. So prophets hear from God, then speak on behalf of God. And Samuel is about to be selecting the next king when he selects David for the next king of Israel. And here's what the Bible says, 1 Samuel 16, 4. It says that Samuel did what the Lord said. That's a mic drop moment. If I had a mic, I would drop it and I could walk off the stage at this moment because if you can simply get this very short phrase and start doing what the Lord said, your life would look completely different. I know it sounds so simple. Samuel did what the Lord said, but I wanna tell you, the, for most of us, the challenge is transitioning from hearing what God says to putting it into practice and actually doing what God says. So I want to talk a little bit about that because we love hearing the Word of God. We love to hear preaching. We love to read the Word of God. We know the Word of God and some of us can recite it. I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old life is gone. A new life is here. I've been crucified with Christ. Therefore, it is no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. And this life I now live by faith in the one that died and gave himself up for me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding and all your ways. Acknowledge him. He'll keep your path straight. We could go on and on and on and on in hearing, reciting the word of God. But what I'm talking about today is not just hearing it, but actually doing it. The book of James, James said, hey, don't just be hearers of the word, be doers of the word. He goes into a little more detail in James 1.25, but whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they've heard, but watch, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. John 13.17, now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. And in Luke 11, 28, Jesus replied, but even more blessed are all who hear the word of God and actually put it into practice. So I want to talk today uh, briefly about putting God's word into practice into your life so that we're not just hearers of the word, but actually doers of the word. And I've just got a few topics that we can land on, things that if we can actually start doing these things, I believe our lives will be different. And the first is this, forgiving. The Bible says we should forgive 70 times seven. I don't forgive them because they deserve it. Watch this. You forgive them because you deserve it. And there are people in the room right now and you've not forgiven someone and the pain that you're experiencing is a result of what you've been holding on to. God wants you to forgive them so that the pain in your heart can be released and you no longer have to carry it for one more minute. I hope today that some of you will do what God says and forgive the people that have come into your life. The second thing is this, the Bible says, let no unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. I wonder how many of us really need to allow God to speak into our heart right now and go, wow, what are the words that I'm saying? What are the conversations that I'm having? What are the things that I'm posting that I might need to reconsider? And maybe you're here and you go, well, Pastor Tim, that's just the way that I talk. It's the way that I grew up. And I would say it's the way that you choose to talk. And you have a choice over the words that you speak. Maybe today is the day that you go, wow, I really need to think about what God says. I'm not going to allow one more word of unwholesome, corrupt talk come out of my mouth. Another topic is loving your neighbor. Such a simple concept, isn't it? But so challenging in real life. How do we respond when people don't treat us the way that we want to be treated? Well, the Bible is clear. We don't give back what we get. We give out what we've received, and that is the love of God, that we can start treating people differently, doing what God says. Another concept that I believe can change your life financially, doing what the Lord said, is found in Malachi 3.10. It said, watch this, bring the whole tithe or the whole 10% of what God has blessed you with back into the storehouse, back into the church. 
This is an area where I believe more and more people struggle with all of the time. And this, listen, this has never been about your finances. This is about your faithfulness. And God wants to know how faithful you are with what he's blessed you with. And when we release it back to God, when we do what he says, our hands are now open to receive the blessings that he promises us. Another concept is found in the book of Psalms. It talks about lifting our hands in the sanctuary. And some of you are like, man, I just don't know about that. I don't, I'm not really comfortable with that. And I get that. But I'm just saying that at some point, as we grow and mature in this walk, we've got to start doing what the Lord says. God said to lift our hands in the sanctuary and praise the Lord. There's something supernaturally that happens during this time that just changes us and honors God. So my hope as you receive this message today is you just would not hear it and say, wow, that was a great message, but you would go, more importantly, I heard from God and I want to not just be a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. And I can walk from this place and say, wow, I'm going to start doing what the Lord says.